Every year, I'm on the hunt for cool projects for my upper level construction class. Someone had mentioned that there was a 700 pound, 100 year old bronze bell sitting collecting dust in our local bus garage. We decided to build a bell tower for it. This is that story. With a nod toward historic carpentry techniques, we actually decided to timber frame the entirety of the bell. Mortise and tenon joints, oak and pegs, and actually old motor oil from our buses completed the frame. Overall, the process went together fairly smoothly. It's always a struggle for an instructor, myself included, to keep a handle on the quality, keep everybody moving, and try to make sure at the end that everything fits together as the plans specified, the plans that we designed. But man, talk about a great group of students. Everybody gave me their all. And I think in 20 years when these students come back with their kids, they'll be able to point out the joint that they cut or the thing that they stained or whatever. And that for me is cool. Here in Ebbett Junction, Michigan, winter shows up with a vengeance. As soon as those winds shift out of the north, the snow shows up and we'll typically shift indoors and do a couple other projects. This year we built benches, another video to come about that. But back to our story, um, when the winter winds were blowing, I kept asking myself, like, what is the story of this thing? You know, where was it placed? How did it end up in a bus garage? How many times did it ring? Was it for emergencies? Was it for to summon the kids to school? Or where? What is the story behind this thing? And eventually, I found a local historian by the name of Dan Johnson who came in at the very, very tail end of our semester. And he told us a story of perseverance, I think, at its root. A story of Finnish immigrants who showed up with nothing but a couple bucks in their pocket, a heck of a work ethic and a desire to succeed regardless of the odds that were stacked against them. Pay $40 down and $40 a year for five years, you could have your own 40. And you had to cut three and a half acres of timber off of that 40 each year, and you had to sell it to, to uh, CCI at the railroad siding. Let's pause for a moment and think about our ancestors. Just downright how crazy they were. They had to clear by hand using one of these things and maybe a double bit axe. So they're hacking away. This is in the era before uh, bug shirts like the one I'm wearing. Um, and they have to harvest a certain amount of wood and sell it back to the railroad. Otherwise they forfeit their land. I'm exhausted, and this is actually just a dead old rotten spruce that fell over on our property. So let's leave it there and keep on with our story. What happened is that roughly around 1900, the country of Finland was still under a Russian czar, and a lot of people, nearly 10% of the entire co uh, country of Finland, uh, was starting uh, to get well, really, well, they're looking for work and to escape the Russian czar. So. Exactly at this time, uh, land was available, there was work in the woods, there was work in the, uh, in the mines. So we had an influx of uh, Finns, starting from basically zero in uh, 1900. By 1928, there were 1,600 people, and most of them were uh, of, of Finnish descent. And the names, the road names around here still reflect that. Juntinen Road, Koski Road, Hedeko, Jokopi, the cornerstone was uh, labeled 1915, because that was always typical right here. When that thing was built, there was no electricity. In the morning, when school started, that bell was rung. When you went out to play for a half hour or whatever, that bell was rung again to bring you back in. 
That's what the bell was for. There was no electricity, so instead of the teacher yelling his, her, her head out the door, that's what the bell was for, and for special events. So that, 100, 120 years ago, was the buzzer system. That's it.